We are back on Fresh Waves. We are now going to listen to an interview that was done last year at this time with Dr. Megan Lynch. And Dr. Lynch will tell us about how to deal with snow, ice, shoveling, and walking in this winter weather that we are encountering. There's light snow in Stouffville today. If you're listening on Wednesday, on Sunday, I have no idea what the weather forecast is. But we know that winter comes regardless of what we prefer, because let me tell you, I'd rather have uh, sunshine and tropical weather all year round, but that doesn't seem to fit here in Canada. So we do have to deal with winter. We do have to deal with shoveling. And every year people slip and fall. Every year people shovel and hurt their backs or their shoulders. So take a listen to Dr. Megan Lynch and all that she has to offer us on this subject. We have joining us in the studio now, Dr. Megan Lynch from the Stovall Natural Health Clinic. Good morning. Good morning. morning, Thanks for having me here. I hope you don't. Pleasure. I hope you don't think that every time you invite me, it's going to be forecasting snow the next day. No, but it seems to be. I don't have that gloom about me. (laughs) You have have no responsibility of what's going to happen. (laughs) That's good. Thank you for relieving me of that tension (laughs) straight away. I appreciate that. (laughs) Although I bet when there is a lot of snow around, you get busy the week after. It is true, yes. Yes. You probably get very busy. I know that physiotherapy gets busy about four to six weeks after, when people are starting to come out of the casts for the broken ankles, broken wrists. Yeah, because even the the slips and falls, even this past week, even though we've had no snow, there's been quite a bit of ice. Lots of ice. And that's really dangerous for a lot of people. Oh, Mm. definitely, yeah. I I even say to the kids, it's not just... The ice that you see ahead of you. When you open the car door to step out, take a look straight down. It could mm-hmm. be ice right in front of you. Yep. Right, on. right in front and of you. And sometimes just that little skiff of snow is hiding it and you don't you notice don't see it. it. And, and that's, that's the most slippery, I find, with that little bit of snow mm-hmm. on the top. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It gets me every time. Yeah. Does it, Jay? Yeah. I know you have a, you have issues with the snow. and it's, That's right. Yeah. My balance it, isn't good. And, you know, being on ice makes it even worse. So. Yeah. Now, are there tricks to being able to walk on slippery surfaces? You don't take the big giant strides. I know that for sure. Yeah, there's a couple things um, to think about ahead of time, especially. I mean, there's a, the obvious things like your choice of footwear. So <laughs> The spiked high heels would probably not yeah, be advisable. Yeah, the heels thing. might not be advisable, but also... Nowadays, a lot of people are wearing um, moccasin-type shoes to even... Yeah. You know, you, you see that a lot that don't have a whole, don't really have any tread on it. No. So then you're not getting any traction there either. So, you know, choosing footwear that does have some kind of tread and you might um, stick a little better to the yeah. ice instead of sliding right out. But some of the most important things involve balance, strength, and stability. Yeah. So those are those are real big focuses for any kind of slips and falls, whether it be ice or just, you know, getting out of the shower or bathtub mm-hmm. and those kind of issues. Because um, every year, a third of Canadians have a fall and a significant number of those have, um, you know, health repercussions afterward from, you know, broken hips and really kind of traumatic um, things like that, but it could be a strained back. It right. could be, you know, a whiplash. Uh, I had a young, um, a young client in who slipped on, on the yard and had a concussion from wow. an oh. ice slip. Jeez. So, you know, those are not, not things that you necessarily think about, um, from, from shoveling, from slipping and sliding, but they definitely impact your health and impact your, yeah. Your life. Now, when you talk about, um, core and strength and stuff. Is that, is it just means that you can hold yourself up better or your body's more able to take the fall? Yeah. So you, you can have a better sense of when that slip is starting. Um, the little, um, nerve endings in your ankles and in every joint in your body, they're called proprioceptors. So the more highly tuned they are, it's, it's like fine tuning that they can sense when the joint is moving before, you know, even necessarily your brain kicks right. into the fact that you're starting to go. So then the muscles and, and your body can correct for that. And you may, may be preventing a fall that way. It also okay. gives you, um, you know, a, a more sure stride and footstep so that you are more steady on your feet and you're able to catch yourself. 
mm-hmm. in a fall sometimes. With it's also stability. one of those things, I guess, you've got to have the, the self-confidence to look like an idiot. Like I always say, it does it, it doesn't matter if you look foolish. Take tinier steps. Be mm-hmm. cautious. There's nothing foolish in being a little bit cautious yeah. when yeah, taking your time. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's, it, just like you said, instead of throwing the door open and just jumping right out and getting on to the next thing, taking that little second to have a look, see what's there, see what's around you, or take the time to throw some salt or sand down on your front step and and go out. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that comes from that, don't don't be afraid to look a little foolish, is when you do have a fall, don't be afraid to just stop for a second where you are on the ground yes. and just take inventory. Yes. Because so That's many of us important. pop right up thinking, oh, embarrassed. I'm embarrassed of yeah. what's going on. And, and sometimes, sometimes can make the injury even worse. Yeah. Or it can actually create an injury because you're stressed. The muscles are already tense. Give them a chance to relax. Yeah. Do your little... I mean, you know, if I do see someone fall, I'll go over and talk to them on the ground, mm-hmm. not encouraging them to get up. Just stay there for a second, breathe, relax. Everything is good. As Take long as time. they're not going to get hit by a car or right. something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you just want to make sure that they're in a safe spot yes. and or get someone to stop the people around. And then just give them a second to get up and then yeah. shake it off. Are you okay? Can Because that adrenaline seems to kick in it and you feel in. fine. And you don't actually feel anything in that nope. split second before you've already popped up and then all of a sudden... You know, yeah. things Ouch. It's like, oh yeah, I hit you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and sometimes the back stuff is all about the spasming of muscles, isn't it? Yeah, because when you have that quick fall and things are in the beginning of a spasm, if you jump up right away, sometimes that can just make everything tighten, tighten in even more. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just give your body a minute, stay, stay there or just, you know, gently get yourself up, sometimes even there, you've prevented a worse a injury. Worse injury. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I think we're going to just take a little break now and pay some bills. And when we get back, we'll be talking more with Dr. Lynch about how to survive the rest of this winter. Because guess what, folks? We're only halfway there. Yeah, well, long way to go. <laughs> Hi folks, Kim Mitchell here. You know, however you choose to get around your ATV, your snowmobile, your boat, car, if you have a motorcycle, all these things take 100% of your attention and skill to operate safely. Alcohol impairs that and bad things can happen. So be smart, okay? You know what I'm going to say next. This message brought to you from the Safe and Sober Awareness Committee. Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party, a two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene, featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists, from the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges, it's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM and online at whistleradio.ca. Well, we're back on Fresh Waves, and we're going to continue our interview with Dr. Megan Lynch. This is a great interview, and there's some really good tips in and amongst the laughing and the kidding. There's some really good tips, so take a listen. You're listening to Fresh Waves, and I'm your host, Bren Masson. We're talking with Dr. Megan Lynch about winter slips and falls and all the different things that come with winter in terms of maintaining good health, because you are a chiropractor. Yes. And so lots of people would call you a bone breaker, but you're not really. (laughs) What is the principle (laughs) of chiropractic care? So chiropractors um, are trained as specialists in treating muscles, joints, and nerves, Brenda. So really, that's kind of our, um, that's our training is really geared toward any kind of injury, disease, or ailment involving muscles, joints, and nerves. So, and bones, right? Because you guys do a lot of stuff with bones. Yeah, but typically it's not um, fractures of bones no, or things no. like that, but where the bones come together in, right. in the Which joints. is the joint, right? Yeah. I guess each of the vertebrae at all is joints. Yeah. It's a series of joints up your back, and when you crack those joints, your 
moving them back into place? Is that it? Yeah, basically, if, if a joint is not moving as well as it should be, we call it a restriction. Um, and that's where we might choose to do an adjustment. So that's the movement where, you know, sometimes you, we, if we do it manually, you'd hear a cracking sound mm -hmm. to do it. And that's just that joint moving quickly. And then it wasn't actually out of place. If you took an x-ray, it would look the same mm -hmm. before and after, but it wasn't moving properly. It was stuck, basically. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that quick motion of an adjustment, it gets that joint moving again. And with the joints in your spine, your spinal nerves come out at each level right beside the joint. So oh. every nerve from um, below your your brain comes out from your spine. So whenever you have a restriction or an irritation problem along your spine, oftentimes it's impacting the nerves because if that joint oh. gets irritated, the nerve that lies right beside it also gets irritated. So sometimes that m means the muscle gets tight because the nerve supplies the muscle, tells it to tighten. Sometimes that comes across as numbness or tingling if the nerve is really being irritated. Sometimes it's the strength in the muscle has been decreased mm -hmm. because now it's not firing properly. But all of those things um, can be traced back to how the nerve is functioning and w what is causing it to, to be impaired, whether it be the joint in the spine or some other issue. So those are the things that we're trained to diagnose and to treat and to refer if necessary mm -hmm. on to someone else. But a lot of people think that chiropractors only deal with spines. Yeah. Um, which they don't, they deal with all kinds of Yeah, any issues. muscle, any joint in your body. So we see a lot of sports injuries. We see a lot of repetitive strain injuries, carpal tunnel, arthritic, um, arthritic joints we treat, um, or rehabbing from an injury. Like you mentioned before, maybe a slip and you sprained your ankle. So that could be something that. And sometimes those sprains where there isn't a bone break involved, the sprains or the muscle tears, those are the ones that take the longest time mm -hmm. to heal. Depending on what the tissue is, um, usually our bones have really good vascular supply, so they mm -hmm. get a lot of blood flow to them, which helps healing. Right. So if there's a lot of circulation to an area, it will usually heal well. But sometimes tendons or ligaments don't have um, as much circulation. Mm -hmm. So often if you tear a ligament, it'll be a longer and sometimes more more frustrating injury to mm -hmm. to rehab than if you had broken the the bone right my brother ruptured his achilles tendon Ouch, oh yeah. that is not yeah. fun four months in a cast wow. and all the rehab he's still limping almost a year later he's yeah. still limping and so. then the limp throws everything yep. else off yep it does indeed brian if you're listening hi sorry to share your <laughs> story on the air, but you know, it's not the first time I've heard about it. And you hear of people with these kinds of things and that's, it's a hard injury to heal. There's nothing really broken. It's just popped off where it's supposed to be attached to. <laughs> mm -hmm. But unfortunately that's a driving muscle for walking properly, yeah. for doing anything where you have to, you know, get some power from your feet. So, mm. and it seems like the older we get, the more susceptible we are to some of these injuries. It it seems like a younger person may not have a bad sprain. They may have a little twist and a week later they're feeling fine. Whereas an older person, that same incidence and the exact same movement causes an injury that takes six months to heal. Mm -hmm. We don't have elasticity. quite the same elasticity. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> So I guess keeping, stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching and keep, keep in shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you got to okay. keep moving. So when you were talking about the strength and the, the muscle conditioning or the muscle condition mm -hmm. that would keep you from really, really hurting yourself if you have a slip. I mean, there's some slips that are just going to be what they're going to be no matter what you do. Exactly. Um, but by and large, if you feel yourself going and you have the strength to kind of catch yourself or hold yourself up in some sort of way, how do we get that strength? So really, some of the most important things that you can do are core strengthening. So our core is basically the corset around um, our torso. 
So, so your rib cage kind of that yeah, area? from your rib cage to your hips. Okay. So basically in, in that midsection, it's the muscles at the front, you know, where we would think about like that six pack of abdominal muscles. It's the muscles at the side of your mm-hmm. um, torso that help bend you side to side and twist your, your spine. It's the muscles of your back and the muscles at your hips. So okay. your buttock muscles, your hip muscles, because all of those really stabilize the lower body connected to the upper body. So okay. if you can imagine your leg starts to slip, does it send your whole body off balance or do you have the muscle control to maintain yourself over your center of gravity? And that's really where those core muscles come into play. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go home and do sit-ups. <laughs> and you don't need to go to the gym and pump iron. But, no, no. So what are we doing to strengthen the core? I've heard that sit-ups aren't that great for you anymore. There's a lot of people that are saying you never, ever, ever have to do a crunch for the rest of your life, which is a good thing for me. Yay! Yeah, sure, yeah. You know what? As <laughs> I'll sign up. As a fitness instructor myself, sit-ups are not my go-to exercise at all. And in classes, especially because you're not sure the health history of who's in your class. Um, Sit-ups can be a great way to get those muscles in the front of your stomach working, Mm -hmm. but they put an awful lot of load on the discs in your back. So if you have a history of back pain, it's not a good exercise to do. So what could you do instead of a crunch? Yeah, so you could do um, exercises even just sitting at your desk Mm -hmm. where... Basically, the feeling that you want to have is as if you were just about to get punched or kicked in the stomach and you want to brace your core muscles. Brace against that punch. Yeah. You could do that while you're watching TV for all you couch potatoes out there who are going to spend an hour or more tonight watching your favorite show on TV, (laughs) PVR or not. You do have good thumb muscles from working that remote. Of course. Okay. So what are you doing? You're sitting there? So you're sitting there and basically you want to make that feeling like you're about to get punched or the feeling that you have when you cough. So if you think of that, and then all of a sudden your abdominal muscles just turned on, Mm -hmm. that's core bracing. So that's turning on that corset of muscles and you're getting the muscles at the sides, the muscles at the front and the muscles of your back all coordinating together. Okay. Just by making a cough. I guess that's why when people have a really bad cough, they they do say that their muscles are all aching and it's because it's constantly mm-hmm, contracting. Because you're using those big muscles and they're, they're getting fatigued if they're, yes. if they're tired. But that's a way to start. So if, you know, this isn't an area that you've done a lot of strengthening, I would just start with that bracing. So you want to start by finding those muscles. You can put your fingers just underneath your ribs mm-hmm. and then do that brace and you'll feel the muscles kind of pop out into your fingers. Then you know, you've got it and then practice doing that and see if you can still talk (laughs) (laughs) Talk while you're doing doing it because then, you know, your diaphragm is still moving Mm -hmm. and you're holding the muscles. Well, I guess that's why they tell you now to breathe through different exercises. Yes. Don't hold your breath. yeah. 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 Well, and breathing is very important because it does keep you alive. Of course, it's a vital <laughs> thing to do. So one of those essential skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, it's not something we often have to practice. So. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, kind of comes naturally. Yeah, and if you can hold that brace okay. while you're talking, then you can build in other um, other variations on it. Okay. So you could lie on your back with your back flat to the floor, find that brace feeling, and then. Take one leg and extend it out, touch your heel to the floor, and then bring your knee back up over your hip. So so bring it back up. Yeah, so you would keep your, your knee lift. bent. Right. Um, like say you're lying on your back with your knees bent up at 90 degrees, uh-huh. and then hold that, that braced feeling while you take one leg all the way out, and then bring it back in bent. And then Ooh. extend the other leg out and then bring it back so in. So alternate. Okay. Yeah, okay. alternating mm-hmm. alternating your legs. And now you're having to maintain that that brace while you're adding motion. And once you get good at that, you can add the opposite arm going over your head. Uh-huh. And so getting the whole body into it. Yeah. Right? And then you're just adding more layers and getting more muscles recruited. But 
Those exercises are not going to cause any strain on your lower back because your back is in a neutral position. Right. It's not, nothing's being compressed and nothing's being strained. So you're still... And you're also aware of it. I find that if you're doing those um, boot camp-like exercises where you get totally caught up in, in the music and the speed and the vigor of it, you can fall out of position and not realize it. So you're doing an exercise and your body's not in the in the proper position. Now, many of these things, if it's organized, you've got a really good leader or instructor that'll come around and make sure that you're you're actually not. Yeah, and you're hoping you have somebody who's going to catch you when exactly. you start to lose that form. But if you're doing it on your own, you can often be in a bad position and never ever know it. Exactly. And you're actually doing more harm than good. And you think you're doing something good for you and then... Yeah. And then you realize after that you've created an injury. Yeah. So w- once you figured out that that brace, you're going to use that in your other exercises. So, you know, if you were to do, if you were to lift something heavy, you would brace first, mm-hmm. you know, bend down, brace, and then lift it up. Because now all of a sudden you've recruited a lot more muscles than just your leg muscles or just your back muscles. Okay. Yeah. So you've got anything else for the core? Yeah, so another great um, exercise, we call it cross-crawl. You're on cross-crawl. cross-crawl. I like the sound of that. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you do on Saturday at the cottage after you've had a few too many. That's I know right. yeah, you, well, Jason. I, I behaved this past weekend. Now so. behave. <laughs> listen to Dr. Megan for me. Yes. Yes, yeah, this one's a little tricky to do after a few drinks because uh-huh. it involves some balance. <laughs> so you want to be down on your hands and knees okay. with your back flat. So imagine okay. your back is like a coffee table. Right. And you have a drink balancing right there on, on your lower back. Mm-hmm. So you do your abdominal brace right. and then try taking one leg out behind you right. and straighten it out up to hip height. Okay. Without twisting your hips, without twisting your shoulders. So you're keeping your hips squared to the floor. Keeping your hips squared to the floor and then bring that knee in and repeat it maybe six or eight times. And both hands are on the floor at this both point. Both hands are on the floor. But then you see where we're going, right? I can see where we're going, and it requires some concentration. Yeah, so then after you get that move down that you could do, you know, six or eight times and repeat that three times. On each side. On each side. Then you would want to add in a little more um, balance training, so you would extend the opposite arm out. So now you're on one knee and the opposite hand, and you're reaching out and then bringing your knee and hand back in and reaching out and coming back in. So these are things that, you know, toddlers and babies are very good at when they're yes. learning to crawl. Without having to think about it yeah, at all. But we lose a lot of that uh-huh. coordination across your body. The reason why those moves are so helpful, when we walk, we have that cross pattern. You know, right yes, arm goes forward, left arm, That's left leg. Yeah. So that training mimics what we do in everyday life. So if we can strengthen it there, then we have that that strength and stability going forward. Great. Well, it's time for us to take another little break. We're going to pay a few bills with a few uh, commercials and take a listen to some of these commercials because we are Stouffville's community radio station about people you know by people you know, and I bet somebody you know has done a commercial on Whistle Radio. And if you're interested in advertising on the station, give us a call at 905-640-1027. We'll be right back with Dr. Megan Lynch after this quick break. 